The Ganges River, or Mother Ganga, as she is known to her people, inseparably bound to India's culture and religion, worshipped by a billion people as a mother who sustains life, a goddess who cleanses sins. The timeless Vedic scriptures tell of her origin. From the divine waters in the spiritual realm, Ganga entered the universe and washed the lotus feet of the supreme Lord Vishnu before descending to earth. Thus, her inexplicably pure water. At her shores, humble pilgrims pray that her purity wash away their impurity. Join them along with saints and heroes, gods and goddesses past and present who have been cleansed by her mercy. Dive deeply. Allow your heart to be carried away by the waters of Mother Ganga. Ganga Sagar, the end of Mother Ganga's 1,600-mile course, where she meets the Bay of Bengal. Pilgrims come here annually to worship her. The scriptures describe her. Sri Ganga Devi has a complexion as white as the Champak flower. White garments and jeweled ornaments adorn her body, and millions of moons shower their effulgence upon her smiling face. She is the ever youthful, ever fortunate beloved of Lord Vishnu, who can remove everyone's sins. In an age long past, the great ascetic Kapila Muni traveled the entire length of the river to this place where he practiced penance and austerity. He wrote, When a pure devotee hears about the glories of Lord Vishnu, who is seated in everyone's heart, that devotee's mind immediately flows toward the Lord, just as the waters of Mother Ganga flow toward the sea. The small rural town of Mayapur is located 90 miles north of Calcutta. Here, the Sri Chaitanya Chandrodaya Temple of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness rises from the sandy banks of the Ganga. This magnificent complex commemorates one of the greatest events of the last millennium, the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya, who is considered Lord Krishna or God Himself, descended from the spiritual world to spread the glories of chanting the holy names of God. Here also is a memorial for A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder and leader of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness who in 1965, at the age of 70, took the teachings and practice of Sri Chaitanya outside the shores of India and distributed them throughout the world. March 2004, devotees from many nations gather at the installation of the world's largest deities of Sri Chaitanya 
and his closest associates, known as the Panchatattva. Sri Chaitanya expresses his love for Mother Ganga. O oh Ganga Devi, your waters are the ambrosia of love of Godhead. The utterance of your name invokes devotional service to the Supreme Lord. By your mercy, the living entities acquire a taste for chanting Lord Krishna's holy names. Slightly south of the Ganga is the town of Gaya in Bihar state. Here in the ancient Vishnupad temple, Lord Vishnu's right footprint is embedded in a stone called the Dharma Shila. Pilgrims mourning for lost relatives worship with prayers, milk and flower garlands. A family in mourning is bound by scripture to make such offerings to Lord Vishnu for the protection and elevation of the soul of the deceased. Nearby lies Bodh Gaya. Buddham, sharanam, As they have for centuries, Buddhists visit Lord Buddha's majestic gilded deity seated below the soaring tower of the Mahabodhi temple. Two thousand five hundred years ago, below this Bodhi, or banyan tree, Prince Siddhartha sat on a mat made from kusa grass, entered into deep silent meditation, and resolved not to move until he achieved enlightenment. During his meditation, Mara, the god of death, attacked him, and a terrible internal battle overtook the prince. But his spotless purity destroyed Mara's illusory armies. Thus, Prince Siddhartha became Lord Buddha, the Enlightened One. Reading from ancient texts, monks from all parts of the world glorify Lord Buddha. These songs have been handed down from generation to generation. Each note is carefully sung to increase the quality of meditation. Nearby the Mahabodhi temple is Ratnagar, where various Buddhist denominations have erected monasteries in their native architectural style. The largest structure is from Thailand and features a majestic tiled roof. Lord Buddha is one of the Dashavatar, or ten principal incarnations of Lord Krishna. For 45 years, Lord Buddha walked along the banks of the Ganga, teaching Ahimsa, 
nonviolence, and compassion for all living creatures. also known as Varanasi, one of the oldest cities on earth, is famous for its scholarship and artistry. believe that by bathing in the Ganga at this spot, they will perceive the everlasting soul, the eternal living force within the body. Bhagavad Gita, the essence of all Vedic knowledge, declares, for the soul, there is never birth nor death. As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul, similarly, accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. It is unborn, eternal, Pilgrims gather nightly at Dashashva Meda Ghat for Ganga Puja, the worship of Mother Ganga. Earth, water, fire, air, for the pleasure of Ganga. is pleased, she happily bestows her blessings and eventually brings us to our Father in the spiritual world. Prayag, site of the famous Kumbh Mela festival, often called the world's largest act of faith. Once every 12 years, these peaceful sands host a tent city populated by millions of pilgrims and sadhus, or holy men. (laughs) 
The name Kumbh Mela refers to an epic battle fought long ago by the demigods and demons for control of the nectar of immortality. The demons stole this nectar from the demigods. Siding with the demigods, Lord Vishnu, appearing as the goddess Mohini Murti, the embodiment of sensual beauty, tricked the demons into giving her the nectar. When Mohini Murti then gave that nectar to the demigods, a struggle ensued. Drops of the precious nectar spilled and landed at the Triveni. The confluence of the rivers Ganga, Yamuna, and Saraswati. It is believed that a bath at this spot during the sacred day of Makara Sandranti opens the door to liberation from the unending cycle of birth and death. Jaipur, the pink city, built according to Shilpa Shastra, a section of the Vedas which teach architecture and city planning in harmony with universal design. Though Jaipur lies far from her banks, Ganga's influence flows here too. The largest silver containers in the world, designed to carry Ganga's waters overseas, rest in Jaipur's city museum. In the late 1800s, Queen Victoria, the Empress of India, invited Madho Singh, the King of Jaipur, to England. Madho Singh reluctantly agreed on the condition that he could carry enough Ganga water for bathing and drinking to last his entire trip. He was convinced that her waters would keep him spiritually and physically healthy. At the heart of Jaipur is the city palace, inspired by both Mughal and Vedic architecture.
The spiritual heart of Jaipur beats vibrantly within this temple, where the deities of Radha Govindaji, Lord Krishna, and his eternal consort Radharani reside. Four thousand five hundred years ago, the grandson of Lord Krishna commissioned the carving of these deities, which were installed in a temple in Vrindavan. Then, five centuries ago, they were carried 200 miles from Vrindavan to Jaipur to protect them from invaders. Here, bhakti, or devotional service to Radha and Krishna, is practiced by engaging all the senses in the service of the Lord and His divine energy. The eyes foreseeing their forms. The nose for smelling the incense and flower garlands offered to them. The voice in singing for their pleasure. and the ears in hearing their glories. Devotees see everything in relation to Krishna. Their humble devotional attitude transforms ordinary daily activities into sublime, uplifting acts of love. mercy here as she rushes from the mighty mountains, blesses one's pilgrimage to the Himalayas. The Garuda Purana states, anyone who immerses themselves in the waters of Mother Ganga at Haridwar does not have to take birth again. Determined devotees immerse themselves in the purifying but icy cold Ganga. These faithful may appear to face the difficulties of this world as others do, but there is a profound difference. They see tribulations as an opportunity to surrender more deeply to their Lord. As happiness comes and goes, so also distress. Both are as temporary as a leaf boat floating on the divine waters of Mother Ganga. Since time immemorial, an Abhishek, the bathing ceremony of Ganga, is performed each evening. Although offerings differ according to the means of the worshiper, the focus is always on the devotion with which the offerings are made, for this is what Ganga Devi accepts.
From the other side of the river, the ceremony appears like birds of fire dancing for the pleasure of Ganga. devotee of Lord Vishnu is present everywhere in this holy city. His legendary power belies his matted hair, ash-covered body, and tiger skin dress. He is called Nilakant, or blue-throated, because the poison he drank to save the universe turned his throat blue. Forgoing all bodily comforts, Lord Shiva lives on the peak of Mount Kailash, high in the Himalayas, where he constantly meditates on Lord Vishnu. Crossing the bridge to Rishikesh, the plains of India give way to foggy hills and lush greenery as we enter the Himalayas. Here, it is easier to withdraw the senses from worldly distractions and turn them inward toward the eternal self. Yoga, the powerful process of cleansing the consciousness to gradually reveal one's identity as a spiritual being. achieve supernatural powers called cities, such as the ability to travel great distances using a sacred river like the Ganga as a conduit. The Ganga runs from the feet of Lord Vishnu at the topmost point in the universe down to the lowest planets. Simply by dipping in her water at one point, a yogi can travel thousands of miles to any destination along her course. Such yogis do not seek pure devotion to the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Their contact with Ganga is compared to the bathing of an elephant. 
After cleansing, the elephant rolls on the ground and throws dust on his body. Although Ganga removes karma, yogis seeking only mystic power create new karma, which further binds them to the material world. Rishikesh is the home of many famous yoga ashrams or monasteries, like the enchanting Parmarth Niketan, with its orphanage and boys school, Students practice yoga, study Sanskrit, and as part of their education, daily worship the Ganga. As they move from the sanctuary of Parmarth out into the world, these young men may one day become ambassadors of their ancient tradition. The simple, heartfelt offering of a humble devotee pleases Mother Ganga. Just as a small child offers her parents a gift out of love, although the gift belongs to the parents, so with love, pilgrims offer the sacred water of the Ganga to Ganga. In a bygone age, a great yogi named Deva Sharma Rishi meditated here to see Lord Vishnu face to face. After Vishnu appeared to the sage and blessed him, many devas, godly beings, also came seeking benedictions. And so this site was named Deva Prayag, the place of godly beings. Deva Prayag overlooks the confluence of the blue-green Alakananda River, which flows from Badrinath, and the Bhagarati River, which originates from the Gomuk Glacier. From this point onward, the river is known as Mother Ganga. Millennia ago, the demon king Ravana kidnapped Lord Rama's wife, Sita Devi.
Lord Rama, an incarnation of Lord Krishna, attacked and killed the demon. Rescued Sita from Ravana's island fortress and enthroned a just king to rule in Ravana's place. Then, Rama and his brother Lakshman performed penance and austerities here in Deva Prayag. Thus, this holy site is famous as an ideal place for sacrifice and meditation. The noise and crowds fade away as we climb to the mountain paradise of Uttarkashi. With no cars, bikes, or even roads, we step back in time to an era of peaceful, simple living. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Of purifiers, I am the wind. Of the wielders of weapons, I am Rama. Of fishes, I am the shark. And of flowing rivers, I am the Ganga. Gangotri, the deity of Ganga's summer residence, altitude 10,000 feet. Due to severe weather, this temple is only open six months of the year. Villagers participate in a two-day walking festival carrying the deity of Ganga from her winter home in Mukwa, thousands of feet below, to Gangotri, her more lofty residence. Local residents help visitors perform puja to enter the worshipful mood of this sacred place. <laughs> 
this boy's head is shaved to invoke the mercy of Ganga. Seemingly out of place, an Indian Army bagpipe band, a local tradition since the days of the British Raj, offers music for the celebration. The enthusiasm of the devotees spreads as they move as close as possible to the deity on her palanquin. The small face of the deity of Mother Ganga smiles at the loving care and attention of her devotees. This deity of King Bhagirath marks the place where he fasted and prayed for Ganga to descend from heaven to relieve his ancestors of reactions from their past misdeeds. Pleased by the king's penance, Mother Ganga appeared before him and asked, When I fall to the surface of the earth, my water will strike her with great force. Who will sustain that force? Gomuk, the actual place of the descent of Ganga, is an 11-mile trek. The Shiva Linga mountain thrusts its peaks towards the heavens, hinting at the divine origin of the Ganga. Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says of immovable objects, I am the Himalayas. Treacherous pathways wind along the sides of the frozen landscape. Ganga's majestic force is divided into many branches, 
Even the main branch, the Bhagirati, is often only a small stream. The Goma Glacier, 12,000 feet high. Small rivulets bubble up as the pillars of ice slowly melt. Here is the earthly origin of Mother Ganga. Let us go beyond the temporal to hear of her spiritual source. The great journey of Ganga to the earth began when the dwarf Brahmin boy named Vamana interrupted a sacrifice by King Bali, the ruler of the universe. Bali agreed to give this captivating boy the charity he begged for, only three paces of land by the measurement of his own small steps. What could be the harm? Suddenly, the Brahmin boy grew to immense proportions. With his first step, he traversed the Earth and the lower planets. With his second step, he covered the heavens until the toenails of his foot pierced a hole in the covering of the universe. Through that hole rushed the pure water of the causal ocean. Thus, Ganga was born. Innumerable universes float in the causal ocean. Ganga flows through the hole in our universe made by Lord Vamana's toe. She pierces through the layers of covering, millions of miles of ethereal space, air, fire, water, and earth. in the higher planets of our universe, home of the celestial demigods. Sacred waters called the Milky Way arch across the heavens. Ganga 
passes Druva Loka, or the Pole Star, and the constellation of the Seven Sages. shield the earth from Ganga's forceful fall. The blue-throated one, the mighty Lord Shiva. The faithful realize that all living beings can immediately purify their minds by touching the transcendental water of Mother Ganga. Today, and for all time, they accept her water on their heads with great devotion.